So then today is the Dominica and Albis White Sunday or Low Sunday, the first Sunday after Easter. And um, I'm going to be here again in, uh, in Connecticut here in, in uh, New Britain, not too far from Hartford. And the epistle for this uh, Low Sunday, taken from the first epistle of St. John, chapter 5. Neither beloved, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by the water and the blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by the water and the blood. And it is the Spirit which testifieth that Christ is the truth. And there are three that give, who give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. <coughs> and these three are one. And there are three that give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. If we receive the testimony of man, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God which is greater, because he hath testified of his Son. He that, he that believeth in the Son of God hath the testimony of God in himself. And then the Gospel is taken that according to St. John chapter 20. At that time... When it was late in the, uh, that same day, the first of the week, and the doors were shut, where the disciples were gathered together for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be to you. And when he had said this, he showed them from his, his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad when they saw the Lord. And he said therefore unto them again, Peace be to you. As the Father hath sent me, I also send you. Whom he had, when he had said this, he breathed upon them, and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, who is called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The, the other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Except I see in his hands a print of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus cometh, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said to them, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put in thy finger hither, and see my hands, and bring hither thy hand, and put it into my side. And be not faith unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Because thou hast seen me, Thomas, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Many other signs also did Jesus in the sight of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing you may have life in his name. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. So then, Father, the only goes to men. So a few considerations on this low Sunday, the octave of, uh, of Easter. And on this day, we begin the Paschal Tide. And also, this is the day in which the converts who are baptized on Sunday, as an Easter Sunday, they would all wear white garments. They were given a full white garment, like an alb, kind of, like a, like a priest's alb, kind of, that they would wear between Easter Sunday and today. And then on today, they would come to the church and take off their white garments. And the priest would instruct them that you are not removing your white garment. The white garment symbolizes the soul, which is pure in virtue. First of all, the virtue of faith. And then secondly, the other virtues. And that on this day, you will remove the outer white garment, but you're going to replace it with the inner white garment, which is I mean, the white garment of faith persevering throughout the whole of your life and the white garment of the virtue of living a Catholic life. So the baptized, newly baptized converts of the, of the early centuries, this would be the Sunday in which it would be sent out. And also here we consider the faith, right? Here we consider the faith. And uh, this consideration of the faith, remember that there are three that give testimony in heaven. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In the adult baptismal ceremony, when we begin the baptism, we say, What do you ask the Church of God? Faith. What does faith offer you? Eternal life. If then you want to have the faith, you, if you want to have the faith, it is multiplied many times. You must have firm faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That the Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. And if you notice, the entire creed is divided according to the Blessed Trinity. The first part, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Then I believe in the Son, and then I believe in the Holy Ghost. And all 12 articles of the Creed are related to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So that when we know the Blessed Trinity, we know the entirety of the faith. The Creed starts, I believe in God the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in God the Son, the Redeemer. I believe in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Catholic Church, which He is the soul of and the life of. And then, and, then, and then the resurrection of the dead and so on. All the 12 articles of the Creed are built around the Blessed Trinity. And it is mentioned multiple times in the adult baptismal ceremony, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If you want to go to heaven, believe firmly in the Father, who is the Creator. Believe firmly in the Son, who is the Redeemer. Believe fir firmly in the Holy Ghost. Now we arrive eight days later, and so we read the Epistle of St. John, the first Epistle of St. John. Three give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Son, or the Word, and the Holy Ghost, the three persons of the Blessed Trinity. And these three are one. But there must be three that give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And so that when you get baptized and when you become a Catholic, you must not be one, one, but you have to be three, one. There has to be Spirit, water, and blood. And these three are one. So that when you go out into the world, you must carry the Spirit of the Father, you must carry the, the, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, the, 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 the Spirit of the Father, the water of the Son, and the blood of the Son and the Holy Ghost. You have to carry the Spirit, the water, and the blood. So the Spirit, of course, refers to the, all, actually all three refer to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Spirit, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The water, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And the blood, which is, again, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That when we go out into the world and live a virtuous life, that life is pleasing to God, and that life means we can go to heaven if it is in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If it is supernatural. If it is not supernatural, it is not worthy of heaven. One of the great errors that many Catholics make today is they believe that all that matters is that you have a sincere heart, as sincere as possible, and that you live some kind of moral life. So if you live a moral life and you live according to the natural law and you live just a moral life, you're going to go to heaven and you're going to be pleasing to God. And it's a bonus if you know there are three persons and one God. It's a bonus if you know the Catholic Church, the true church. It's a bonus if you believe in the teachings of our Holy Mother, the church. That's a bonus for those people that do better. But all you need to do is just live a moral life. But that's not the way our ancestors taught. What must be done to live a moral life? From the very, very beginning, before you're told, you learn mommy and daddy, my mama and dada. And one of the first things you learn as a little baby, you learn how to make the sign of the cross. You learn the sign of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And in this sign of the cross are the four necessary truths, without which it's impossible to be pleasing to God. These truths are absolutely necessary to be known by souls and believed by souls and be the center of their lives. And that when this day of the of Low Sunday, Dominican Albis, we call it White Sunday in Latin. Today is White Sunday, the day we remove the white vestments. I mean, we put on the white vestments of the, of the, of the mass. We remove the white uh, uh, garment that the baptized wear. And they're supposed to carry that white garment out into the world, Dominican Albis. And then Low Sunday in English, because now we make the transition from the great victory of Easter to carrying Easter out into the world. And then, and then so that this... This, this, this Sunday is a day where what are we going to carry out into the world? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We must carry the holy doctrine of our church out into the world. It is that that makes it possible for me to be moral. It is that that makes it possible for me to do anything good. And my, the good that I do is worthy of heaven if it is, if it is informed by supernatural faith. The good that I do will, will, will give me glory in heaven if it is sanctifying grace that is inside of me. And what is habitual grace or sanctifying grace? It is called the indwelling of the blessed trinity. 
And at the very end of the season of Easter, what are we going to have? At the very end, on the very last day, we're going to have the first Sunday after Pentecost. Very beautiful Sunday, but it's always suppressed. And that first Sunday after Pentecost is always suppressed by the Feast of the Blessed Trinity. Because you remember that it is a trinity that we carry out into the world. And we're going to send, we're going to remember that on the first Sunday after Pentecost as we go out into the world. And remember it today on Low Sunday as we carry Easter out into the world. And wherever we go, we bring the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are in the Old Testament as well as in the New. And many modernists tell us they always they diminish the Blessed Virgin Mary. Always the heretics diminish the Blessed Virgin Mary. But also heretics diminish the, the Blessed Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The modernists, for instance, it is today in the passage of sacred scripture in the epistle of St. John, that some of the modernist scripture scholars say this is one of the controversial passages in the sacred scripture. It's interesting how there's a lot of verses in the Bible. But this verse is said to be, I think that they added these words. I don't think these words were there. And even when I was in my scripture class in the seminary, we read some of these authors of the early 20th century, and we were reading them about this one epistle, first epistle of St. John. He says, we know that St. John said there are three that give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And St. Isidore of Seville and so many other saints tell us this refers to the three, among other things, to the three baptisms. The baptism of water, the baptism of desire, the baptism of blood, and that these three baptisms are one. And it also refers to living our life in a triple way in God. But did it actually say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Is that really in the scripture? You know, the great scripture scholars say, well, you know what, I think it was in the gloss. The gloss is uh, the side the side of the, in the sacred scripture, you got the actual type, copy of the scripture. And he said, I think the copyist made a mistake. You know, when a copyist writes down, a bimadab, a boobadab, boobadab, a blibadab, maybe he's going to make a mistake. A bimadab, a boobadab, a blibadab, maybe he'll make some kind of mistake in the genealogies. Maybe he can. But do you think a copyist, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, that's a mistake. <laughs> Are they going to make a mistake about that? The copyist did not make a mistake about that. St. Jerome knew very well that these words are contained in sacred scripture, but the modernists say that it's not. And it's interesting that even in our Catholic, some of the conservative Catholic books, they said in the early 20th century, we know the modernists are lying about sacred scripture and they're questioning everything, but they've got so much evidence about 1 John chapter 5. they got so much evidence about it. So many great scholars... A Lucifer, Beelzebub, and a whole bunch of other great scholars have all said that this stuff may not be right. These are pretty smart guys. These are angels of light. They know their stuff. And then it's, uh, this is one of the controversial passages in sacred scripture. Even before Vatican II, the controversy rose up at the end of the 19th century. Scripture scholars are starting to dig up the scripture. I don't know about this passage. I don't think they knew about the Blessed Trinity in the time of Jesus Christ. He said, the Father and I are one, but, you know, maybe he was saying, we're tight. We're tight. We're real tight. <laughs> maybe he didn't mean that he and, he and, the, and the Father were actually God. I mean, I'm not denying the Trinity, but I don't know if he really meant that. <laughs> and I don't know that this text really says that. And so they have a great argument about it, the great scripture scholars of old, of the last 150 years, not the ones before that. And so therefore it says 1 John chapter 5, This is he that came by the water and the blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And it is the, and it is the Spirit which testifieth that Christ is the truth. And there are three who give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that give testimony on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. And so they say, well, I don't know. I don't know if this really says that. They fight against the truth. Don't worry about it. I still believe in the Blessed Trinity. I'm just questioning whether or not I think that a well-meaning scribe realized these three are one, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And he recognizes, clearly refers to the Blessed Trinity. And so a well-meaning scribe went ahead and added in those words that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are also one. But supposing you use these idiots' modern textual criticism, let's say, which is condemned by the church, but he said, well, even if you use their own method, it is clear by context, 
It is clear by what is said that God, that St. Paul, St. John rather, is speaking of the Blessed Trinity. And he is saying there is a testimony that Jesus Christ is the truth. And this testimony is given by the Father. What did the Father say? This is my beloved Son. He said it twice, publicly before all men. And when he said that, what happened? There was a spirit, a dove, that set it over his head. And that's the Holy Ghost. And then what did the Son say? As the Father hath sent me, I also send you. That's what he said to his apostles. But he says, but it is necessary for you, however, that I go. So the Father sent me, and I must go. It is necessary for you that I go, and I will send a paraclete. I will send a comforter. And I will send the Holy Ghost, so that the Holy Ghost is God. With him comes the Father and the Son. The Son is God. With him comes the Father and the Holy Ghost. And the Father is God. With him comes the Son and the Holy Ghost. And Christ made it very clear throughout his public ministry, speaking to his apostles. And then St. John, the beloved disciple, before his death, he wrote these words in his epistle. The first epistle of St. John, chapter 5. And he knew exactly what he was writing. And these words are chosen for Easter Sunday, not Easter Sunday, this low Sunday. They are chosen specifically so that the priest can instruct the young people that have just got ordained, that just got uh, baptized last Sunday. The Father created, the Son shed his blood and redeemed, the Holy Ghost gives life and charity. Now you are going to go out as a Catholic in the world. Like a father, you must believe every word that proceedeth from the Father. We believe every word of our holy faith. We believe every doctrine that proceeded from the Holy Mother of the Church. You will be a believer in the doctrine. Like the Son, you will shed your blood. Like the Son, you will go out and sacrifice yourself for the good of others. And you will sacrifice yourself that the faith might be spread. You will go and die on a cross. That's what you new baptized Catholics have to do. And like the Holy Ghost, all these things, your belief will be filled with the Spirit of God. And your belief will be filled with charity. And your actions will be filled with charity. Because remember what St. Paul said, If I give up my own life, but have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So make sure that when you believe that Jesus is God, that there is love in your heart. Make sure that when you go out into the world to help your neighbor and carry the faith to the ends of the earth, that there is charity and love in your heart. And these three must be one, just like the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, or the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. So likewise, the Spirit and the water and the blood must also be one. Your Spirit is the breath of life. And this comes from, it's interesting, the Spirit here refers to the Father. We don't want to think of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit here refers to the Father. The water refers to the Son. And the blood refers to the Holy Ghost. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. Because how are we alive? How do we breathe? Because God is to breathe the Spirit of life into Adam. And he believed the Spirit of life into anyone who is baptized and anyone that receives the Holy Faith. Faith gives life to our whole being. And faith gives, makes us members of the kingdom of God. So you will receive the virtue of faith from the Word of the Father. That's the Spirit. And then there will be water. Water cleanses. Water cleanses. And water is a vehicle. Water carries food. Water carries nutrients. And water also wipes away that which is filth. It's part of the cleansing. Wipes away that which is filth. And water is a source of life. Hence you will be a follower of Christ who is the water. And then the blood. The blood is life. Without blood we have no life. Our life is in the blood. And the blood goes throughout all the body, carrying nutrients to the entire body. And therefore the blood signifies, in this case, the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And it gives testimony. Just like God the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost give testimony, so likewise the Spirit, the water, and the blood gives testimony. So there will be the, Spirit, the, the testimony of the Spirit, the water, and the blood. We have to carry the Spirit of the Father, the water of the Son, and the blood of the Holy Ghost into the very ends of the earth and give testimony. So that I will give testimony to the true faith by saying the words of the true faith. And I will give testimony to the true faith by living according to it and making reparation for my sins and going to confession and so on. And I will also make sure the Spirit of Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is inside of my veins by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So that everything I do is spirit, water, and blood. 
And everything I do is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And hence they emphasize to all the Catholics in earlier ages, do you want to go to heaven? Be good. Can you be good? No. You can only be good in a way that's pleasing to God if the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are living inside of you. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Unless the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost live inside of you, we cannot be pleasing to God. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost must be in my mind, must be in my heart, must be in my actions. And when I wipe away sin, it's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so it was my first duty to bring the Blessed Trinity wherever I go. This is why one of the very great heresies of Vatican II, one of the very great lies that mocks God in Vatican II, it's when the Vatican Council said that Muslims and Catholics worship the same God. This is a complete blasphemy. For Muslims do not worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Therefore, they worship Satan. We do not, with God equals Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, God equals a testimony of three. The testimony of three. The Father gave testimony of the Son. The Father and the Son give testimony of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives testimony of the Father and the Son. And these three are one. And this testimony is three persons in one God. These three persons in one God must be in everything that we are and what we do. That's why as Catholics, our first duty is carry the cross. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Carry the cross, which is the Father who sent Christ to the cross, the Son who died upon the cross, and the Holy Ghost that gave it strength and life. Christ hangs on the cross by his arms. The Holy Ghost holds him upon the cross. The Father sends him to the cross, and also the Holy Ghost brings the cross out to us. There is no cross without the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There is no faith without the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There is no life without the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There is no peace without the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There is no way to be good without the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Muslims worship one God. They're not very good. They're great at chopping people up in bits and cutting off their heads with knives. They have a gift that way. They can blow things up. They're pretty good that way. And they're really good at partying. They're pretty good that way. And the Protestants are good at denying God, living in sin. They're pretty good at that. And all the heretics are very good at doing bad things. But only the Blessed Trinity inside of us makes it possible for us to be good. That's the only way. It's not the number of gods you believe in, as the foolish idiosity of Vatican II says, but the true God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, must be indwelling inside of me. He must come out into my being. And that includes today. We don't play games with our holy faith. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost must be in us, and they are not pleased by a false worship called the New Mass. They are not pleased by the false worship of all pagan religions. They are not pleased by a false belief. And the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost must be inside of me by the Spirit and the water and the blood. And we have to ask the grace of the Spirit, the water, and the blood be in us, and that the Spirit gives testimony, that is, I speak with my mouth, breathing forth the truths of faith, that the water gives testimony, that I prove this truth of faith washes away the sins in my own life, that I'm regularly going to confession and fighting against sin, and that wa washing away the sin, and in a vehicle carrying that truth to souls like river carries, uh, carries water, and the rain carries water to give nutrients to the soil and give life to things, and then the blood, which is life. No blood, no life. The blood is life, and the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost must be in me, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and it must give testimony. For he who bears witness to me before men, says the Lord Jesus Christ, I will bear witness to him before the Father. And who does not bear witness to me before men, I will forget him before the Father. So the Trinity is very important. And this is one of the Sundays we are reminded that we cannot be pleasing to God in any way. We cannot be stable in the love of God. We cannot persevere in the love of God unless the blessed Trinity, Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, are inside of us. And the modern scripture scholars, modern scripture scholars of the last 150 years, who play games with the sacred scripture, and they decide to say, oh, this doesn't really say that. There are very wise men that looked at those manuscripts. Consider those wise men. Why do they question 1 John 5? Is it because they're deeply interested in proper textual analysis? Or is it because they have an agenda? There's a lot of Bible, a lot of scripture, a lot of quotes in the Holy Scripture. And that's kind of an important one. Don't you think St. Augustine would have noticed? Don't you think St. Jerome, who translated the sacred scripture, would have noticed? Don't you think that the fathers of the Council of Trent would have noticed? Remember the history of our church. If we were covering up truths, what would we cover up? 
Peter, where was he on Good Friday? He was out that day. <laughs> yeah. Peter was feeling sick. He had a cold. He said he got a cold on Wednesday, and he, he got better on Sunday. That's how we say. Who was the one that cursed and swore? That was Peter. <laughs> Who's one that denied Christ more than anyone else? Well, that was Peter. And that's the one Jesus Christ chose to be the head of the church. We don't cover up sins of our ancestors. We don't cover up the sins of Adam. We don't cover up the sins of David. We didn't leave out the story about the great King David. My spirit is in David. David is my son. I love David more than anyone else. Did you hear about David and Bathsheba? <laughs> Did you hear about David and Urias? Did you hear about David and his pride in his old age, by which he wanted to count how wonderful his kingdom was, had to be punished by God even when he was old? Did you hear about David who committed so many other sins? They left out this. We did not leave out the sins of David. And Solomon is very wise. Did we leave out the sins of Solomon? No, he did not. We don't cover things up in our holy church. And St. Jerome does not cover things up. And St. Augustus did not cover things up. And these words of sacred scripture contained in the, in the epistle today are truly the words inspired by the Holy Ghost. And that these are words that are most true. And the Father and the Word of the Holy Ghost, these three are one. And they bear testimony to the truth of our faith in heaven. And the, they must be inside of me by the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit, the water, and the blood. The Father must manifest himself in my spirit. The Son must manifest himself in my water. And the Holy Ghost must manifest himself in the blood. And these three must be one. And they must bear testimony. So that the newly baptized can't just say, well, I believe in the true faith now, and I'm going back to my own ways. No. Now you believe the true faith. Let it enter down into your heart. Let it enter down into your actions. Let it come out. And let there be a, let there be a bringing of that faith to souls. And remember, that there's no way of being good without faith first. Without the faith in the Blessed Trinity. And we will not find a way to be moral without it. And you cannot be moral without the Blessed Trinity. The Muslims tried it. It didn't work. All the pagans, so many of them tried it. It didn't work. And the Protestants tried it. It didn't work. They created our modern world. And the, the, and the Catholics are now trying it. And guess what? It's not working. There must be a true faith. A testimony of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then that testimony enters into our hearts, into our spirits. So that we become three in one as Christ and God. Our God are three in one. In any case, we're closer to that. And God bless you all. This is the beginning of the Paschal Tide. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.